And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono blue tempo. So we're bringing back some mono blue here. We're going to be playing it over in ranked, over in mythic. Because um, I like this deck. I think it's pretty good. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with the B&R B &R announcement tomorrow. It's not a renouncement. It's a B&R announcement. <laughs> Got to separate those. We don't know what's going to happen there, but there's some speculation that it's possible that Vale of Summer gets banned um, with it being banned in Pioneer already. So there's there's a chance that it does, uh, that maybe that, that that was like a precursor for it being banned in Standard. You know, very uh, it's probably a better chance that it doesn't, but it's possible that it does. And if it does, having a bunch of counter spells will be more valuable for sure. And so let's let's kind of get some practice in with a deck with a lot of counter spells and almost everything instant speed. Uh, we got Terramanders in here because it's just such a strong card, and it only costs one mana, even if it's not instant speed. Like just playing this on turn one is still real good. Um, but then our other threats have Flash. We got Spectral Sailor, Brineborn, Cutthroat, which is probably our most impactful overall card. Uh, Brazen Borrower, of course, how good this card is, does a good job of uh, bouncing, slowing the opponent down, and also being a good attacker. Uh, besides that, a lot of counter magic um, in here. And then some, some card advantage with Winged Words. If we just need that little bit of extra gas, we have some ops to for some card selection. Um, a little bit more removal with the, the fifth fifth bounce spell with the four borrowers and one unsummon. And go with a couple Tails Ends. Tails Ends are really good against the um, Oko Krasis decks. You know, so this can counter an Oko or a Nissa, but then also you can counter the triggered ability from Krasis. They don't get to gain a lot of life and draw a lot of cards. Um, you know, counter the fight from Wicked Wolf, or you know, just kind of can just can kind of do a lot of things. Um, you can uh, keep the Cauldron Familiar from coming back into play. That's that's a cool little thing you can do there. But yeah, so let's give us a try. So we'll play like five matches over in ranked. Um, you know, just various interaction over in our sideboard, depending on what we need for like whatever our opponent's playing. Um, so yeah, let's go and give this a try. Alright, so we're going to play traditional standard ranked with mono blue tempo. Hey, what's up, Kendis? The earliest slot for a donation deck um, would be up, up next. Oh, this Just Guy Fires is a donation deck. Um, but yeah, I can, I can do one, I guess up next, then I'd, I'd move like model black control down and that would, that would probably have us do the standard cascade event, uh, tomorrow on best of one day, Monday. Um, this hand's not good and this should not have been a keep. I guess I just kind of had a lands and spells and I didn't really pay attention to exactly what I had going on here. I should not have, I should not have kept this. We don't have any threat. Um, and these aren't these these aren't even these are not like this doesn't do anything if you don't have threats. Um, and this is only like a good tempo play. Sorry, I, I didn't really pay attention to my hand there. So that's bad. Um. Yes, dive. Yeah, dive down, rotate it out. Yeah, that was in Ixalan. So I just had to unsummon because I I couldn't beat a turn two Oko. With what I had in hand.
Yeah, yeah, dive down and curious obsession both rotated out. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, we do have, yeah. I mean, um, Brineborn Cutthroat is is a huge payoff, and yeah, protecting Brineborn Cutthroat is really important. Um, but even Terra, like Terra is a five five flyer, protecting this is like it's. And plus, this is also a two mana one one. Like this isn't just a two mana one one. Why am I saying 1-1? One, one? I'm saying f uh, 5... Or yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, the plating, yeah. You still get a 1-1 one, one creature. Alright, Sabotage doing its thing. Getting rid of these extra lands. Not sure why that Paradise Druid didn't attack. Oh, figured it out. Yep, yep, definitely want to adapt before Essence Capture, and so might as well, you know, get get the damage going here and just adapt first. It, it means that I don't get to have both of them available, but yeah, we definitely want to adapt first before putting the 1-1 one -one counter on this. Hopefully we don't need Plating plus Capture. Hopefully we only need one of the two. I'll shear the wool from your eyes. And spin you clarity. They didn't just block with the goose. Your expectation. Why would they block with the goose? Must have more Okos. Alright, so we've gone through nine lands already between the seven in play, the one we surveilled, the one we scried. That's not a situation that we want to go through nine lands with this deck like this. Yeah, even with another Oko, that's still, yeah, that still should just be a block. I mean, these opt is good. Opt is better than a random card, but I guess we don't keep the second opt.
I mean, they still have six cards in hand. We're very unlikely to win this. But it's because I kept it. I really did keep a poor hand. They have nine mana and six cards. Like it's, it's not likely going to be us winning. I guess they're trying to figure out how to play Anessa here. Land number 12. Alright, so Boros, Knights, and best of three. Cyborg needs evaluation against Gruel. All right. Let's see what we got going on over here. Oh, I meant to attack with a 1 1 2, of course. Oh well. Justice Strike is probably the best card you can have against Gruul. I do like that a whole lot. I like that card a lot. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just make Crisis a 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, yeah, it's sure they get to play Goose also, but... I mean, I, I guess they were worried about me bouncing, but I, it's not like I have lethal. So, yeah, I don't I don't want to trade here because, yeah, another, another Essence capture could make my Terramander bigger. They elk if they have like an Oko that elks my Terramander, it's even bigger. Probably should have fought the Terramander.
All right, well, we stole that one. That's for sure. That was that was a steal. Yeah, that that one was one that I I did not think we were winning that. <laughs> yeah, we just borrowed. That's true. We we brazenly borrowed that one. That's a good good point there. Okay. So those are all cards that I kind of want to play. And cut the unsum of the plating. It's still 65. We got to cut five more. I'll take out a land on the draw, too. Uh, all, all threats. No interaction, but we have draw steps to draw interaction, and they were mulliganing. But them mulliganing, you know, it's kind of thinking that maybe they didn't have the best of hands. Also, I do want my opponent to be scared of a counter spell, even if we don't actually have one. If they have like Wicked Wolf, I could bounce it, I suppose. If they have Golgari Queen. I can still just like play Cutthroat and kill the Queen. If they have Oko, I'm in trouble. I mean, obviously, my my very best play is hit Mystical Dispute. It's just. Not too likely. Open your heart to the magic that dances around you. Welcome to the feast. <laughs> Darn. Uh, 
Well, they didn't activate Oko yet, so I'll just bounce Oko right now so they don't get to activate Oko. Yeah, absolutely, Candice. Yeah, so that, that sounds good. Tomorrow, second slot. Sounds good. I'm writing it down. Okay. I would have liked to like hit a spell there, honestly, and kind of like a an instant or sorcery spell to put into the graveyard to help the Terramander. Because if if we would have hit an instant or sorcery spell there to surveil over, then we would have had three over there, and then I would have been able to um, adapt one of these Terramanders. And that would have been nice. Hey, what's up, Borderin? Thanks for keeping on that streak an entire year now. Thank you so much, there, Borderin. Thank you, thank you. My elemental friend. Walk with me, sing with me. I will enlighten you. One bite, and all your cares. So they just cast gone. on their turn their turn five, they just cast two Okos and a Wicked Wolf. This is pretty fair. And of course, they have millions of loyalties. They're both at six. My strength fades. Your new look is enchanting. Yeah, turn five, two planeswalkers and a four mana creature. Ugh.
obviously I'm dead. I can't. I don't have any lines that like keep me alive. Um, besides just holding everything back, but it's it's not a fight we're gonna win. Because you know, I have to chump block with Terramander, chump block with Spectral Sailor. Um, we're just gonna be dead the next turn. So I could stay alive for one turn, but we'll be dead the next turn. Is Disdainful Stroke just better than Essence Capture? Can counter Nyssa. Also, but still counters Wolf and Krasis and things like that. Sure, we don't get to we don't get to counter Paradise Druid. But I think that's not I think I would rather be able to counter Nyssa and any expensive spells than Paradise Druid. Um, yeah, not exactly sure yet, Frank. Um, I think we're going to be doing a mono red deck. Um... Yeah, Storm, Storm wants to see a mono red deck. Um, but then... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to be doing some, some similar stuff to what we have been doing. I've, I've really liked the best of one decks that we've been playing recently. It's okay, Hazuki. You, you're right here. You're right in time for the first... The first match. Yeah, you just got to game three of match number one. Mm. Castle's not bad as far as a land goes. Maybe this should, this should just be a 20 land deck, not 21. Because, you know, we've cut a land and we're still hitting land drops just fine. You know, our first game we saw, you know, what was it 12 lands? So we saw the game one. Then we cut a land for games two and three and we're hitting land drops just fine. Being on the play is pretty good. I should cast the opt first, because now I'm just wasting the surveil.
The reason why I put the Terramander over there is because, like, the only thing they're going to have here to really get me is, like, Ritual of Soot. I mean, I guess they could have Legion's End. If I don't play Terramander, we're, we die to, to Legion, or, like, Legion's End would get me. Yeah, I, I don't know why they'd have Ritual of Soot, either. <laughs> yeah, stifled the egg. Because, um, yeah, like, the, the two foods could have gained six life and stayed alive, I suppose, but... All right, now even Ritual is set. We're good with the Spectral Sailor, so we can play this Terramander here. Okay. Impressive third game there. After borrowing game one, brazenly borrowing that. Ooh, that's a lot of level up, a lot of experience with that win. That's right, Sundays are experience days. Okay, it's not it's not a it's not just a regular rare. We didn't get gems. So it's either a wild card or a mythic. Let's see what we get. A mythic wild card. Even better. Alright, let me check something here real quick. Yeah, it's both, a mythic and a wild card. I was thinking about trying this for the, the Cascade event. What do y'all think about this for the Cascade event? You have a lot of twos here that hit, hit these one drops. Get a lot of Corpse Knight, Cruel Celebrant triggers. Maybe Wrinkle instead of Soren. Maybe I should be playing Wrinkles. All right, that's, I think that's what we're going to play there. Yeah, basically always get the cat-oven combo. There's no threat, but double opt is good. I like opt. It's a good card. Yeah, I guess once upon a time is that that does seem pretty broken in the cascade event. That you, you cast once upon a time on turn one like this and you just go put Goose into play. So you just always get Gilded Goose on turn one. That just goes into play.
So that seems pretty broken. Hey, what's up, Kanzan? All right, too many lands. Hmm. The creatures aren't that scary. I would have rather drawn the essence capture than a <clears throat> than a land. Threat. I guess this is a threat. That's better. I guess all, all that playing Spectral Sailor does means that I have to fight over Wicked Wolf, and I don't really want to fight over Wicked Wolf that much. Because Spectral Sailor can't get through Gilded Goose with that second point of toughness. Trying to keep digging. Getting more and more counter spells. Even though I, I could have mystical disputed that Paradise Druid. Draw card or borrower? Use borrower. I did not use the one mana for the Ompt because we already knew that I was going to be drawing that card off the top. 
I want to be able to, you know, like, we have a whole lot of mana here. And so for just one mana, I think that having that scry is, is really valuable. And Spectral Sailor is so good. And what, we've drawn, what, like four cards off it so far? Like, we both have a ton of lands, but... We still got a lot of cards in hand. Hey, Giovanni. Obviously, this mystical dispute's just not going to do anything anymore. So I can just discard it. Probably going to be... Bouncing the Gilded Goose and then Essence capturing the Gilded Goose. I don't, I don't know if I need to do that. I love having the Tails End. Like, the Tails End's perfect for Hydroid Krasis. That would, I really like that we found a Tails End for Krasis. So, like, if they if they do top deck Krasis. I'm probably not going to use Borrower for that. No, I don't think Mu Yanling would be good in this version. No. I don't really want the three mana sorcery speed card. Alright, so an extra Tails End and all the Ether Gusts. And probably two Disputes being on the draw. Cut, Capture. Play a Disdainful Stroke for two. We'll cut the Plating and the Unsummon and a Land and the Winged Words. And I have one too many cards. I mean, I want to play all these. Uh, negate. All right. Yeah, I, I like Mu Yanling in um in a, like a a, a blue green X, you know, um, planeswalker deck like where you're playing, trying to get turn two Okos or turn two Mu Yanling or Nissa, and you have Spark Double that can copy it. Like Mu Yanling on turn two, and then Spark Double Mu Yanling. It's pretty powerful getting doubled of that tick up. All right, well, first time we haven't had lands. Ugh. Second time we haven't had lands. So this is tough because Mystical just, like... I need my two lands, and all three of these spells are pretty good. So I could just get rid of the Opt, but Opt is really strong. But all Opt would be doing would be probably looking for these kind of spells. So I guess that's what we're going to be doing.
love to draw, you know, like a Brian Bourne cutthroat. Need a threat. Dress hurts. These ether gusts are looking so bad. I don't really like anything about how this game's played out at all. Oh, my Spectral Sailor back. Just won a game where I played two cards and lands the entire game. Fires of Invention and Kenrith. Wow. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. 
They didn't just make a food with that goose there? These either gusts are good, like, whenever you have pressure, and you can pressure them and everything. But when you have nothing, like, no pressure or anything like I have here, they're really not very good. But, you know, if you're attacking and pressuring your opponent, then it's just, it's a really good tempo play. Please don't have Hydroid Crisis, because, I mean, I guess I would just have to, dis I'd have to Tails End and Dispute a Crisis, probably. Just play like a regular Planeswalker. Ugh. I think still a 4-4. Four -four. Thought about bouncing that food, of course. Probably should have just bounced that food. I mean, now now I wish I would have for how this has played out. I wish I did, but I didn't really want to show the, the borrower immediately right then also. And I don't know. Could have maybe done something else. I'm sure they have Veil of Summers. They just haven't drawn one yet. We're getting some threats now. Looks like they got game two here. I didn't play the Spectral Sailor there because it would just get blocked by the goose anyway. And I wanted to be able you know, want to have another spell to be able to play to grow cutthroat. It's 
That's why it's just so important to have a threat early. You know, like this is, you know, turn like 10 or whatever before we're like actually playing a threat and it, it just lets them resolve one thing so we don't have enough, you know, can't counter every single thing. And then we die. Alright, so let's try not to just draw all the ether gusts and no threats right away. Let's try to have a threat before we have all those ether gusts. Because we did not get very good value at all out of those ether gusts. I mean, I guess we did get rid of some paradise druids, but that was not great. Uh, there's no chance Cauldron Familiar gets banned whatsoever. Like, it's that's at 0%. Yeah, that's not going to happen at all. Hey, what's up, Nugagris? This is kind of like the last time where it's like, I mean, I, I like how we actually have like real counter spells and not Aether Gust. I like that. You know, Brazen Borrower, I guess, is our threat. It's not not ideal. You know, it's not um, Brineborn Cutthroat. But I think this is like last time where I put back Opt. Now, we'd only have... We'd have two three drops though, also if I put back opt. No, negate negate's very important. There's so many things to negate. I have goose every turn on every game on turn one. So I'll still be able to counter Oko for this turn. But I don't have negate for like duress. So they have that again. So I'd rather them have expensive cards like that and not, you know, a whole bunch of Paradise Druids and Gilded Gooses like they've had the other games. Um, those mana creatures allow them to double spell earlier. I'd rather them just have a lot of, you know, a lot of expensive spells. Thanks for not blocking. Got an extra point of damage in there that we probably should not have.
There is no way that this should be in, in the 75 of their deck. There's no way. And just hold up. I'm just gonna hold counter magic for you know like Nessa, Oko, those things that are just gonna be much more impactful. Yeah, like that's that's just like you know one, one for one trade. Like yeah, they kill the they kill the one one, but I was like Nessa and Oko can be worth a whole lot more than one card. That hurts. They just can't see it. We've been getting killed by the third Oko here recently. That hurts. Ooh, I feel so alive. Yeah, it keeps being the third Oko. It's not poisoned. Trust me. So, like, they shocked in here so they could make another food. Alright. Ether Gust being good whenever we have pressure. I wouldn't mind a fourth Oko with us having this negate. All right, good to go there. They can crack this food to go back to to go to three after my attack. Okay, well we bricked. We got first draw, we bricked. Hopefully opponent bricks also. Brick. Alright, we both brick. GG's. Two and oh. Man, this is both of these both of these games against these Oko decks have been real intense, real close. Both of these matches. We you know got two one wins both times. 
Yeah, yep. We're 2 0 against Oko. Oh, yeah, Terry Mander is awesome. Yeah, just a real, you know, like 5 5 flyer is just so big. Ooh, we get a Mastery Ore for beating two Okos in a row? I would, I would say that's. I'd say that's a, a worthy. That's a. Uh, a worthy reward right there. Unfortunately, out of all of these, I really want this Worthy Knight. So you know, Worthy. That's the one that I, that's the cosmetic I want the most. But it's just all the rest of these cosmetics in white. Glass Casket's good. I forgot this is a card. I should maybe make a deck built around Linden the Steadfast Queen. I forgot that's even a card. Yep. And then, yep, new BNR announcement is tomorrow. Um, it's usually at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 time Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern, but um, it usually gets announced a little before that. So, you know, like starting at like 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern, could be announced anytime between then and the next hour. There are no threats in the deck. We haven't done a very good job of, of drawing um, the one card. Uh, Brian Bourne Cutthroat best threat that we have. Alright, Terramander's a good threat. Need another land, of course. I'm going to have to negate a swift end on Terramander also. Yeah, the, whatever the BNR announcement is, yeah, the twenty first is whenever they'll have the update that they're that they'll if there are any changes, they'll make them on the twenty first. Stone rain this fabled passage. If we had the mana. I would definitely double block Faust the opponent. Don't get a single. Oh, come on. Don't get that single block. That's the easy one. Be adventurous. Do a double block. It's like they get the free upgrade to, the, to a double, double block cheeseburger, and they're just taking the single. I also like to live dangerously. <laughs> or I too like to live dangerously. Uh, Matthew, you grilled some burgers. Got some burgers and dogs there. Ooh, yeah, that looks good.
So yeah, of course I could have tails end that, but then I don't have protection for the terrymander. If they find a cauldron familiar, of course we're in trouble. But if they do, like if they cast, if they ever cast a um, cauldron familiar, I'll unsummon the Ayara. And then we'll be able to tails end it on the way back. I feel like that card is def definitely going to hit Cauldron Familiar. <laughs> Terry and Jerry Mander for the win. I have a good I have a good friend whose name is Jerry Terry. I'm not sure, like, what to really change, if anything, or, you know, like, the Mystical Disputes are just three mana counterspell unless they pay three. That doesn't sound great. Um... I'm trying to put this in my deck. There it goes. We'll take him out for an extra Tails End in Hypnotic Sprite. Get some Spritz. Yeah, I think Mono Blue is good for Best of One as well. Um, one thing about Best of One is is you do see... like I think like the Mono Blue strategy is probably better in Best of One than Best of Three in general. But the decks that people play in best of three are a little easier for mono blue to beat. There's a lot more hyper aggro in best of one, which is uh, more difficult for mono blue to handle. So while like mono blue is probably a better deck in best of one, theoretically, the decks that you're playing against in best of three are better matchups.
All right, so we just had our first <clears throat> person play Veil of Summer against us. It was brutal, of course. If they have another one of those, I'm in a lot of trouble. Um, the... Well, I'm in a lot of trouble. Had it the whole time. The best deck for best of one is... Is, like, soul type food. Or just, you know, some kind of food deck. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's like a best deck for best of one. This is tough. I want to activate Terra Mandarin. I want to activate Castle. Eldrain Mastery Pass ends whenever the next set comes out, which should be like the end of January. Yeah, if I if I upkeep Scry, I'm only I'm only keeping two mana available if I upkeep Scry. That changes the clock. It's unfortunate. If I sit back, we lose. If I attack, we lose. If I sit back, a Yara plus Castle. It's going to be killing me.
Drawing cards is better than scrying. They got you know, an extra, like, either three or four cards there with their castle. I'll get the extra um, essence capture in here, especially with seeing the Massacre Girls. Um, and take out a land. As we just had, had too many lands. Hopefully we get to untap with Brineborn Cutthroat and they don't... Mm. I would have much preferred to, to actually play the Cutthroat this past turn. You know, I want to get that thing in play. No, I, I don't. No, I don't do cube drafts on Magic Online. It's a little greedy. Cool, because I didn't. You know, I didn't hold up negate to protect Cutthroat. Oh no. That's a problem. I mean, this is already just a problem. Goose make food. Bring back familiar, the blocks. With sacrificing food, they trigger trailer crumbs. This is not the turn for basic island for a draw. Not the turn for Basic Island being the draw. I mean, Terramander is good because, you know, attacks in the air, but it doesn't even really make that much sense to attack with the 6-5, honestly. So, obviously, they, they make a food. They bring back Cauldron Familiar. They activate Trail of Crumbs. But then by attacking... It just puts the Cauldron Familiar back in the graveyard where they just get to do this again, but... I mean, with them having a Yara, they can put the familiar back in the graveyard anyway very easily. This is just a, a great combination.
I'm really surprised they let me untap with Terramander and, and draw another card. I did, like... Yeah, I'm really surprised they didn't Murderous Rider on their turn. Good job, Phoenix Revive. Obviously. It's just going to take a long time for us to lose with this combo, but I can't beat that combo. just a slow death but that's all it's going to be is death no McCowan I don't sorry I just answered you a little bit ago but no I guess you didn't hear me but no I don't uh, do any cube drafts on magic online Don't know if this hand's gonna be good enough. Alright, does not look like it'll be good enough. Never mind. Alright, pretty sure this hand's not gonna be good enough now. I am planning on blocking. Um, I wanna keep Spectral Sailor to try to pump Cutthroat on turn three. Both Cutthroats, preferably. But I'll just take that. I have no sp no spells to pump Terramander. Their creature attacks for two. Mine only attacks for one. Does this check twice, or I guess, I guess it's going to trigger, yeah, I can play two cards, but that's just going to trigger, all right, good, get a land out of there.
Mono Red's never been a good matchup for Mono Blue. This is not one that we want to be facing at all. So we got like Unsummon, Ether Gust, Frogify. Get this other Essence Capture in here. Um, this is a good matchup for Lazatep Plating. Like, maybe I shouldn't have tried to trade with the Steamkins. If I just don't, if I don't trade with Steamkins, though, they just get to empty their hand, and that's basically what they get to do anyway, though. No, I don't have any Sir Eulen Drakes. Like, Sir Eulen Drake is, is awesome in this matchup, but this is really the only matchup for it. And, Sir, like, yeah, this is, this is, like, this is a bad matchup for us. Sir Eulen Drake would definitely help. But Mono Red is just, it hardly gets played these days, you know? Like, it, this is just not a, a matchup that you'd see very much at all. And... So therefore, you know, like therefore, I just just I'm just not using the sideboard slots for Sir Eulen Drakes, but you know, with that being said, I under I understand that it means that I'm probably just going to be losing this matchup. That's how it is. I like all these cards. Yeah, like these are all good. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, if Red does have Bone Crusher Giant, stops it. Yeah, uh, yeah, Bone Crusher Giant is very good against Sir Eulen Drake for sure. Hmm. Hurts need that land. I didn't play the Spectral Sailor because I really wanted to double spell after playing Cutthroat. These Cutthroats, I really wanted to, to have the one mana, you know, be able to have three mana and be able to double spell. Not a matchup I'm gonna win ever. So whatever. All right, one more here with Mono Blue Tempo. Just gonna move on. Or two and two. Let's see if we can make it three and two. Hopefully, it not. Play against Mono Red. Come on. At 
least it's not mono red. I need these extra cards. I kind of need some lands. This looks like a deck built on I mean ideally I'd cast opt first and hit a land drop, but it's if I if I miss the land drop it's just really could be pretty bad. So I'm I'm bouncing the the Stormfist Crusader because, uh, you know they're they're looks like they're really built around spectacle, and I don't want them to be able to play those things easily at all. Yeah, that was kind of the that was yeah that was my plan was to play an elemental deck today. That was definitely my plan before. All right, so if I would have opted, we would have hit the land. It was a you know it was a viewer elemental deck. Um, But I kind of just decided to, like, getting up today, I decided to build mono black control and play that instead. But there's there's the link to the elemental deck that we would have been playing and a, and a whole lot of information about it. Good draw. I I should I would have would have needed to play my land first. They're not playing, or at least they didn't have you know shocks, cheap early removal. It makes my life more difficult. If I take out Dispute, Frogify, maybe play it, put in some other things. 
on summon capture hypnotic sprite. Maybe we just do this. Maybe I just don't play Ether Gust. And give this a try. Um, yeah, when you're when you're looking at the card in in the deck builder or collection uh, scenes, there's a button in the top right that can toggle the card styles on or off. But if you just want some card styles from the event, you can switch switch them that way. Maybe I should just pass and had go Spectral Sailor Essence Capture. So obviously putting the counter on these things is not as good. Because then they can't adapt. Should just pass and played Spectral Sailor than Essence Capture. I'll just put the counter on the Terramander and trade with this to keep my life total up a little higher. Mm. No land drop. Okay, got a large Brineborn Cutthroat now. We're looking good now. Stabilize. Got this cutthroat out here. Well, I guess stabilize isn't the exact correct term. They're still doing damage to us, but we're ahead in the race. There we go. Got 
five mana. They're going to make me discard a card. I think we're just good with just discarding this Sinister Sabotage. Uh, I guess I could just discard this Spectral Sailor. The next turn I play Sprite. Never mind, don't, not even playing Sprite. Well, yeah, we'll play Sprite. We'll just discard the Cutthroat. I want to be able to keep Sabotage available, or if not, Brazen Barber. <laughs> Thanks, Storm. I mean, that's not like the biggest deal. I don't know. Give that thing death touch, I guess. We'll just counter it. It allows me to empty my hand next turn as well. Okay, three and two. Ooh. We got some cards. We got an uncommon and a mythic I don't have. A magic mirror. Awesome. We get a throne of Eldraine pack. Maybe another wild card. Nope. So it was a rare. I already have the CACC gem reward. So for those of you, you that don't understand how this works, so I've already collected all the rares in the set. So if since it's a rare in the pack, there's not more rares to give so we get gems all right so that's three and two in mythic with mono blue that rhymed we are 2-0 against the yoko decks um, but they were really close games um, played against mono red and that just wasn't competitive at all and then also struggled just a little bit I guess we played, they were very close games. It didn't go our way, though, with um, with a uh, Trail of Crumbs engine deck. Uh, but yeah, Mono Blue, you get some you get some pretty fun games to play. Uh, I understand this isn't the, the most fun to play against because you're trying to counter a lot of stuff, but it's it, it feels like you're playing a little bit of an underpowered deck and you're just trying to squeak out um, some wins and get underneath the opponent and stuff and... I always found this deck kind of fun to fun to play. Um, the about the deck, the twenty one lands felt like a little much. I think you could probably go to twenty. And I'm still not sure if I love the winged words. Yeah, I don't love the winged words. Tails end was awesome. This card was just really, really good. Um, even against the, you know, against both Oko decks, it was amazing. And then against the uh, other deck that had a Yara and Masker Girl and Vraska Golgari Queen and all that stuff. Hypnotic Sprite was like, was, was pretty sweet in the sideboard. I wanted something to, you know, kind of be able to counter cheaper stuff um, that they top deck that, you know, a non situational counter. And, you know, it can get another. Another body out there, too, to attack with. This card was pretty cool. Um, this deck could play, like, Spyglasses if, if you want to try to stop uh, Cauldron Familiar from keep him coming back all the time. I think that that's going to kind of be a problem, like the, you know, Cauldron Familiar with the deck, uh, especially blocking Brineborn Cutthroat. Terramander was just awesome. This was, like, just such a great card for us all the time like you know five 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 flyer um yeah this card was just awesome but there we go so that's mono blue tempo all right so if you're watching this video later on youtube uh please hit that like and subscribe button over there and of course leave some comments um uh, let me know how it's going if you're trying out some mono blue yourself 
But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.